Hello and welcome back to Snark and Spark. This is a, another um, March wrap up and today I'm filming this all on the same day. <laughs> um, for this one we are talking about what I read in March and personal life updates of March. So if you're not interested in that, sorry this video is not for you. Um, so let's dive right in. I feel like I got quite a few books read in March. Um, hopefully I will have a fun little diagram that I will like insert that has a cute little graphic that I've put together of all the covers of the books I read so you can see them all. And if not, that was just me smiling awkwardly. <laughs> so let's dive into it. I have my reading planner in front of me. Um, I really get, like to decorate this planner. Um, but not in the weekly spread. So if I show you like a weekly spread for this, it's very boring and I don't mind to show you this at all. Um, so like this is a week, like this is a weekly spread in this. Um, I just write in it. I have a couple, you know, little things that I use, but it's not, it's not heavily decorated. Um, however, I do decorate the notes page and the monthly overview. And I feel like that's where I do a lot of the decorating for my reading planner. Um, so like, this is the notes page. I did a lot of decorated, decorating here. I used a lot of stickers, um, but specifically, and I love the way this looks, um, this is that monthly, that monthly overview. Um, reading planners tend to be the only planner that I really decorate and I actually actively use that monthly overview um, and then the daily I go in and just jot down notes about what I did or didn't read that day maybe I take some very specific notes because I'm a weird nerd and I like stats about certain things um, so I like to know how many pages did I read today what was my reading speed how long did I read because um, I'm weird like that <laughs> but I like to know that thing but on my monthly overview I like to keep track um, one, it's beautiful. It's obviously a St. Patrick's Day spread. Um, and this particular spread is made by um, Mama Bear Sticker Co. and Jump To It Design. I found them on Etsy. I just stumbled across them on Etsy and loved their like monthly layout um, design. Um, I chose to do one for April and I will show you April I'll go ahead and show you April. Um, so this is the monthly. It was called like Koala Dreams or something. It was either that or a very obnoxiously brightly colored like Easter spread, which I just wasn't drawn to. So I liked this one. It is pretty pastel pinks and mints and purples. Um, I think it's called like Koala Dreams, I think. Um, love this. And here's the note page that corresponds with it. Yeah, so, and I will show at the end of April how I use all of these. Um, but what I like to do with my monthly overview, which is what I have it turned to, is I essentially keep track of what I did each day. Um, I don't, I just write down what book I read or what audiobook I listened to because I like to look at the end of the month and as I'm going through the month, how much I actually do read in a day or every single day kind of thing um, or like how many days in the month that I actually did you know pick up a book or listen to a book I like doing that so I won't I'm not gonna sit here and go through every single day because that would bore you half to death but like I said this is this is very satisfying to me um, I like this a lot this is what works for my brain so let's dive in um, at the beginning of the month, I did go ahead and finish The Personal Librarian. I was listening to it as an audiobook. Um, and that was a book that I was listening to with my family. We, we listened to that as like the ladies of the family book read. My mother-in-law picked it. Um, it was good. Not my normal choice. Would not have picked it if it was up to me. Fine. That's the point of these book groups, right? We read things we wouldn't normally pick for ourselves, um, and I I did enjoy it. 
we actually are having like a book club meeting tomorrow. Um, it would be Sunday the 3rd, and we're discussing it, and my grandmother-in-law, my husband's grandmother, is picking the book for April. Anyway, so that was that. Um, then I worked on The Taming of the Queen. I was listening to The Taming of the Queen at the beginning of the month. That, is, that was the next book in the Philippa Gregory series that I've been working my way through. Um, that book threw me for a loop. It was very, very good, but it, it threw me. Um, that told the story of um, the last two wives of King Henry. And it was told through alternating perspectives of Anne Boleyn's sister-in-law, Jane Boleyn, and then through the perspective of Kitty Howard, and then his last wife, um, Catherine Parr. And so it was their rotating perspective. Yeah, that was what that right? Yes. Because it wasn't all just Kath and Parr. It had all of them in it. No. The Boleyn Inheritance. Shit. Sorry. I'm mixing my books up. Okay. The other Boleyn girl was all about the Boleyns. The Boleyn Inheritance was the book where it was told through Jane Boleyn, Kitty Howard, and Anne of Cleves. The Taming of the Queen was all about Catherine Parr and her marriage as the last queen of King Henry. That's what The Taming of the Queen was. Um, I also was reading A Cold Death in Amsterdam. Yes. So I finished The Taming of the Queen, which is an audiobook, and I finished A Cold Death in Amsterdam. Um, started, finished, whatever. A Cold Death in Amsterdam. That book was okay. Um, will not be, it's a whole murder mystery series. I will not be reading more. Um, it was one of those where she is a native Dutch speaker that writes in English, and she does a great job, but there are definitely things that get lost in that process, especially because she still keeps the character set in Amsterdam, um, but writes in English. So there there are things that get lost between, you know, commu through communication and lost in translation, because I don't live there, and I am not a native Dutch speaker, but I am a native English speaker. speaker. <laughs> Obviously not. Um, but I don't have, like, the frame of reference for what happens in that country. So there were a few things that didn't make sense, but it was fine. I just will not be continuing that series. I don't remember who the author is. I should probably keep track of that. Did I write that down? Uh, no. I did not. Oh, well. Should I... I'm trying to think. Okay. So, ooh, how do I want to do this? Okay. I guess I should back up. <laughs> um, so, I participate in WIPGO, which is another group, and we draw two numbers a month, and I have a WIPGO board for my reading, and the numbers drawn for March were 15 and 21, and for the number 15. It was the category of diversity, which I have picked from a different reading challenge called Pick Your Poison. I have it I should, here. I have things, but this is not as complicated as I'm making it sound. Okay, so y'all know I'm in a bunch of groups, 
Magical Stitches for our reading challenge for the year, um, Vicki, headmistress of Magical Stitches, decided to do a pick your poison year-long reading challenge where there are multiple categories and each category has a theme and then it gives you different tasks, right? And she has picked um, 12 for the year, okay? And then I decided I was going to try and attempt this whole entire challenge. So I took all the numbers that we didn't pick, that weren't picked for Magical Stitches, and put them into my WIPCO board. And then when I used all of these up for the WIPCO board, then I picked in other ring goals that I have personally. Sorry, this printed as like gold, so it's not showing up very well to my camera. I can kind of um, things. So the let's just start there. Magical Stitches, the required reading for Magical Stitches was the second book in the embroidery mystery series by Amanda Lee called Stitch Me Deadly. So that was the required reading. That was like our book theme for the month. The category that they that then she picked was category number eight, which was body parts. And it was, that was a book with feet on the cover, a book with hand in the title, a book about heads, and a book with a nose on the cover. Then um, my WIPCO numbers, of course. So WIPCO was number 15, which was diversity. And the diversity category is a book by an author from a different culture, a book about gender identity, a folk or fairy tale retelling in a non-Western setting, and a book about a character with a disability. Okay. The other WIPCO number that was drawn was 21. Five, 10, 15, 20, 21, which was a personal goal of mine that I had set, which was to read a classic. Um, so that informed several of the decisions I tried to make concerning books that I was reading. Did that happen 100%? No, I still have freedom of choice, obviously. So let's kind of dive in. Um, so personal librarian, obviously that was something my family chose to read. Um, I worked that into a book with feet on the cover. Um, the Taming of the Queen, I worked to use for a nose on the cover. Even though I'm still in the middle of that series, you know, I'd started that series last year. I still obviously want to continue it, but I was trying to make all of my reading fit different prompts if possible. I had checked out A Cold Death in Amsterdam for a previous reading challenge and had never gotten around to it, but I still wanted to be able to say I finished that task. So I read it to be able to finish off a different category. Um, Stitch Me Deadly was the book of the month. I read The Wrath, The Wrath and the Dawn. I listened to that as an audiobook. I can't recommend that book enough. Okay, now we're getting, okay, I found how I want to do this. I'm so sorry. You had to like sit here and figure me, figure me out. You had to listen to me figure this out. So. Um, Stitch Me Deadly, really fun. I'm really enjoying that series. It is a cute little cozy mystery. You know, she runs her embroidery shop. Dead people keep popping up in this small town of Tallulah Falls, and she keeps sticking her nose in to solve these murders. Um, it was good. I really enjoyed it. Did not see the twist coming, which I also really enjoy when I can't do that. Um, then The Wrath and the Dawn. I listened to that as an audiobook. Like I said, I made that fit into a folk or fairy tale retelling set in a non-Western setting. Um, it is a reimagining of um, A Hundred at A Thousand and One Nights, the Arabian story, the Arabian Nights story. Um, there's also some mix of like Aladdin in there. There's, you know, flying carpet. Um, it was really, really good. I really, really enjoyed it. It is a duology. So I finished the first one, um, The Wrath of the Dawn, in three days um, because I was into it um how i uh the like emperor the caliph marries a different girl every single day because he then murders them at dawn the following day so murder someone at dawn marries another girl in the afternoon evening or whatever 
murders her the next day, and this has been going on and on and on. And the main character, she decides that, you know, um, Shabi is like, heck no, I'm going to put it into this by killing the Caliph. And then it's, you know, this retelling of A Thousand and One Nights um, because she's trying to keep herself alive so that he doesn't murder her. Um, and, you know, there's twists and turns and love, and um, it was really good. It was really, really, really good. Um, check that out. Uh, I enjoyed listening to it as an audiobook. It is set, you know, in the Western, or, sorry, Middle Eastern, um, and hearing someone else say the names and the, the correct pronunciations of titles and places, just, I wouldn't have been able to read it and get it correct. I would have gotten lost. So having it read to me, amazing. And that was The Wrath of the Dawn. Super good. Finished it and then immediately started the second one, which is um, The Rose and the Dagger. That was just like a free me. I couldn't figure that, fit that into to anything else. So that was just a, that was just a gimme. Um, also fantastic. Loved it. Um, then was Severed, which I read. It is a nonfiction book, um, like the life and history of like severed heads, essentially, um, because it was a book about heads. That was really good for a nonfiction book. Um, nonfiction can be hit or miss. I, unless you are hardcore into nonfiction, I think it could be hit or miss. Um, it has to be really, really interesting. Otherwise, I'm going to fall asleep reading it, as interested as, in the topic as I am. This was a great book. It was still really heavy. I kind of had to adopt a strategy of like maybe reading a chapter a day so that I didn't get bogged down, but it was excellent. I really, really enjoyed it. Then um, I started listening to The Queen's Fool, which is the next Philippa Gregory novel in the series. I did not finish The Queen's Fool. I am still listening to it. Um, I'm on like disc, disc, disc six now. Um, And the last book that I read, I technically finished it yesterday, the 1st of April, but I'm going to count it as March, um, was One Man Guy, super cute, um, YA novel. Um, I am considering that um, by an author from a different culture. The author um, is um, Armenian, Israeli, and his main character is Armenian. and that plays obviously a huge part in the novel. Um, it is all about him being Armenian and fitting into his the expectations set by his family um, as a young Armenian son. Um, and it's really good. He you know comes into his own coming of age, cute little um, gay romance story. It was super sweet. I blazed through it in a couple days. Um, I would have had it actually finished in March. I just suffered a really bad migraine headache. I was ill like the last day of March and could not do anything other than lay on my couch. So, so that was how many books? Let's see if we count that I finished. Personal Librarian, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight books in March. That's a lot. <laughs> and I started another one, so I read eight, and I but I started a total of nine, so that's really awesome. I'm I didn't realize I did that. Putting it into perspective, I'm really proud of myself. Um, every month, I always set a personal goal of trying to read for at least an hour a day, every single day. Uh, I've already not done that. I did not read for an hour yesterday. I finished up one man, one man guy in like half an hour, but did not start another book. Um, but I will be reading today, obviously. I'm going to finish this, and yeah. Um, did not do the classic. I was supposed to read a classic, did not get around to that. The classic I picked because I own it um, is Oliver Twist. Did not get to it, and I really need to. I don't know. I'm just, like, putting it off. Like, I'm just like, nope, can't do it, won't do it, and I need to just, I need to just do it. So, <laughs> that's all there is to that. So yeah, I'm going to leave that there. <laughs> um, personal life. So we've moved on from books. I'm sorry that was very rambly and me just kind of going in circles is what it felt like. Uh, 
personal life things in March. First and foremost, obvious, I have dyed my hair pink again. Um, it is a different, technically it is a different shade than it was before. Um, this one has more orange. It was a new color she had in her shop. I asked her if there was anything new she had that she wanted to personally try um, to see. Um, so we had this and we did it and it's really fun. It's a pinky orange. There's that. Um, other fun things. Um, it, March is Bryant and I's anniversary. So our anniversary is the 3rd, so we celebrated our anniversary on March 3rd. It was a lot of fun. We um, stayed home, really didn't do anything, and that is exactly how I like it. <laughs> I'm looking at my calendar to see other things that were, like, important in the month of March. Um, my aunt and uncle came to visit us and stayed for a weekend and it was fantastic. I loved having them here. They had not gotten to see our home yet, so they got to come and stay with us and um, they watched Caden play basketball, which reminds me, so Caden is done with basketball. His basketball games ended. He had his last game in March. Um, then he, oh my gosh, I'm like going through my month. So, we got Caden a big boy bed, which is, so he wasn't a twin, um, and we, you know, you're looking at your kid, and it's like, God, you look so big in this twin bed, right? He's so tall, so we're like, okay, I guess it's time. Um, it does help my husband works, you know, for a mattress company, so we got him a queen. We went ahead and just jumped over full and got him a queen. And that was delivered in March, and now he's in a queen bed. And now he looks really small again in his queen bed. So he got, you know, his big boy bed. Finished basketball. Um, unfortunately, Caden also caught both strep throat and the flu at the same time. So we were dealing with that. Um, stayed home for a couple days. I think it was really nice that he had his big boy bed while he was sick. Um, had to stay home from work, take care of him during that time. It was rough, um, but he is better now. We had no complications from it. Um, I mean, we we did the antibacterial. We did amoxicillin. Um, they advised us not to try and do an antiviral at the same time because little kids' bodies can't handle that all that medicine at the same time. So we just stuck with amoxicillin. And he did fine. He got over it. Um, there are hairs in my mouth. Then he had his spring break and he went back home to Indiana for spring break. He hung out with my in-laws, my husband's parents. They took him for a week. He had a blast, of course. You know, baking cookies, riding bikes, um, he did, the weather was nice there. I got pictures of him playing in, like, the sprinkler. They took him to see a soccer game. Um, you know, he, like, a collegiate-level soccer game. He, he had a great time. He had so much fun. During that week, um, my husband and I went on not one, but two dates, which was crazy. <laughs> uh, if you're a parent, you definitely understand what I mean. <laughs> you didn't have to find a babysitter. We just had to make ourselves presentable and go out um we Caden started tennis lessons in March so we ended basketball then we started immediately into tennis <laughs> um and so he did tennis lessons um those end this month he had tennis lessons then what else happened I'm not, I don't think anything else I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, tennis lessons are ongoing. He had his very first spring soccer practice. So right now, only for like one more week, but we had tennis immediately after tennis is about our soccer practice. It was crazy. Um, doctor appointments. Um, I am continuing on with therapy, which is going really well. Um, I feel like I'm making some good progress. I'm about a month, a little over a month, I guess, actually, yeah, um, we're 
over a month, maybe a month and a half or so into um, some new medication, trying out with from my psychiatrist, my psychiatrist. Um, we, I was on one, we decided to switch because we didn't feel it was effective. So I'm trying a new medication. Um, I think it's going well. She is really happy with the progress we have made. Um, and if you've ever been on like SSRIs or anything like that, serotonin boosters essentially, um, it takes time. It takes a really long time. Your body has to adjust. It takes months to see if it works for you kind of thing. So we're being really patient. Um, and it's actually a good thing because I told her I really didn't feel like amazing. Like I don't feel amazing, but I can tell that it's not like it was. It feels stable. It feels like there's room for improvement. And that's actually a good thing um, because I'm going to continue therapy. I'm going to continue taking the same medicine at the same dose. We're going to check back in later. And essentially, as long as we keep noting that progress is being made, even if it feels very small, that is a good sign. Um, and so I feel good. I feel really good about that. Um, I am taking those steps to, you know, secure my mental health and to make sure that I am at a good place for myself, for my husband, for my child, for, you know, my job to be able to function as, as an adult with responsibilities. I am taking care of me. Um, and that's really, really positive. You know, I had therapy, I had a psych follow-up, I had a physical, <laughs> you know, just all the things. Um, I got my COVID booster. Um, regardless of your feelings on that, don't really care. We're not going to get into that, but I did do that. Um, horrible headaches that following day, which is why I was like out of commission the very last day of March first day of spring happened, daylight like saving times happened, like, you know, we're just chugging along. We're hopefully moving out of winter into spring. Doesn't feel like it because literally just like a day ago and this morning, it snowed and it was snowing and raining this morning and it's cold. Um, so, I don't know where, come on spring, like <laughs> it's your time to shine. But yeah, like the important thing is to just keep moving forward to keep, take it one day at a time, keep moving forward, and that's encouraging. And I am finding encouragement. Obviously, a couple things I don't like. I think I, I can tell that I have gained a couple pounds from this new medication. Is that ideal? No. But at the end of the day, I would rather my brain be better, and I feel that I'm in a men better place mentally than worry about a couple pounds. Like, I can deal with that. So pick your battles, choose what's important, focus on what's important to you, and just go for it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave this here. I did a really quick rundown of what's happening in my personal life, but I don't mind. I can always share more. You know, there's nothing that says I can't. Look out. We're gonna. There's going to be another video for April. Um, so we've done the March wrap-up. I do want to cover what's happening in April in the stitchy groups, in my reading plans, and just what's going on there. So that will be coming up next. Probably won't film that today. Um, it's, it's getting afternoon time here, and I do want to take some time to actually go stitch today and read. So I'll film that like tomorrow. I have the weekend. Um, and with that, I'm going to leave that here. So take care of yourselves. Um, happy reading, happy stitching, happy watching, happy listening, happy doing whatever it is that makes you happy doing. And in the meantime, oh, also real quick, um, my husband and I have been watched Bridgerton and finished it in two days. Don't recommend doing that because we were up far too late, but do recommend that you watch Bridgerton season two and season one if you haven't or if you want to watch it again. It was, um, we loved it. Like, we loved that show wholeheartedly. So, and it is honestly one of the only shows that I can actually sit through multiple episodes and did not have to have, like, stitching to keep me occupied. So, take that for what you will. But anyways, in the meantime, be easy with your eyes.